so I'm meta programming enthusiast. So in free time, I'm developing library that basically generates uh, stuff like methods, enums, events, and other stuff. So, and as a result, you can have some kind of reflection in C++. So in this talk, I would like to start from definition of meta class. So meta class is basically the class that produces other classes. So in C++, uh, any template class is basically a meta class, at least from compiler perspective, since you have like different arguments and it results in different class. So um, also, if you think of template, what it is, it is basically some interface that has different implementations. So basically, even uh, when you declare a template class for different arguments, it will have pretty same flow, at least from abstract perspective. So you have like action one, action two, action three. It may be different from uh, for different types or different arguments that you are using, but logic will be the same. So probably uh, the first question I would like to ask people. So if you are, if you don't mind, like to write how much do you use templates in production or uh, at pet projects? So it probably the options will be like often, never, or rarely. So if you want to share such um, thing with. Yeah, guys, you uh, you can, can use post. chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if it's easier, you can like say it out. Right, we have first answer rarely. Probably someone wants to add also. Uh, right, so at least we have few answers and uh, because and thankfully it's at least rarely so if you use it at least a few times a year you probably will think of things as templates so before going to next slide i would like to ask you to think of class if it was a template so basically what would be its argument type so um, basically in class you can think of it uh, some entity so it has some some something right and what it will be this something so it's not required to post in the chat what it have but i'd like to you to think of it so probably if we are uh, talking about class it will have like some members it will have some methods it will have probably other stuff like static members and other stuff. So definitely all classes will share the same interface, the possibility of having such members like functions and, uh, and fields, for example. Uh, but in this talk, I want to specify a member uh, with the name method. So basically, if you think of method, it should have some template basically because if you think of method it can be invoked it can be implemented somehow it can be named it can modify object in different contexts so because of that if we want to implement method we should have like this template for this method we should have a logic how we can say that something is method and uh, this something interpret in different ways. So for signature, we can use return and arguments types. So basically, because method is invocable, we can think of invocable anything that we can pass some arguments in and get return out. Uh, implementations. So since um, method is performing some action, we expect it to do some functionality. So it will be basically implementation name. So name is basically the mechanism. So we all use names for function. We are doing this intuitively. However, if we think of it um, more uh, verbose, I would say that name is a way to 
see that some methods have different implementation uh, without going in, in details. So basically, if you see that function is named sum, you already know that it is different from multiply without going inside the code. Um, CV and ref qualifiers. So basically, when we are dealing with objects, it can be constant, it can be volatile, it can be L value, it can be R value. So methods um, also can behave differently in those cases. So this um, argument, these options should be present in the plate of method. And after all that, um, probably we will not, but not probably, but definitely we will not be satisfied with ability just to create one method. We want some API that will help us to do it as easy as possible. So to require from us only things that really needs to not duplicate stuff and other things. And probably with time, uh, we will be not enough with satisfying getting function by names. So basically I mean in the case when we have um, different qualifiers, like for getters, you can think of constant non-const versions. So in this case, to distinguish those two methods, constant, not const, we also need to compare methods by their qualifiers. So API should support that. Um, probably somebody has concerns for now. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you want to add. So if not, I will continue. So uh, going deeply in a, each uh, state of agenda. So invocable, you can think of anything that can be invoked, right? It has return type, it has arguments. So in this case, it's not obvious how it can be used. However, we all know the example of arithmetic operations that are used for introduction to templates. So basically you have different types like float, double, int, and other stuff. They all have pretty much same interface. They can be added, they can be multiplied and other stuff. So in this case, uh, templates allow us to declare some interface, some flow, which will be, uh, okay for any of these types, even though they will have different implementation. And we can manage somehow return type. So I don't think that here will be question, but if you have one, you can add. Right, let's go. So implementation. So it will be a little bit harder than uh, declaring a template invocable. So in this case, uh, we want somehow be able to change implementation based on argument, right? So in C++, I see uh, one way of do that is to store Lambda function. Uh, since C++ 11, probably correct me if I'm wrong, you can um, convert Lambda as function pointer if it has no capturing, right? You can see on, example on right side that you are passing lambda and it can be stored as on left um, side of um, of slide as function pointer with some arguments so basically what you will need here probably the deduction guide to make it easier just entering lambda maybe not but general concept you will need to specify how this function pointer should look like so it have arguments it have return types it can be it should be somehow stored so we can pass lambda in constructor then store it as function pointer and then uh, invoke this lambda so the interesting part about invoking is that we can use here crtp pattern it is used for having ability to access class a from class method so basically what it does uh, since we are using inheritance here so we are so our class a is inherited from method a we know that this that is used in method a will be of type class a and because of that we can easily cast method uh, method this this of method class to this of class a and 
thus in this way we can access uh, members of class A in method uh, in method class. So probably there is some concerns right now. Probably maybe about static cast. Maybe somebody is not aware of CRTP pattern. So don't be shy. So I will say a few words about static cast. So static cast is used here because it allows us to. So if we compare why we are not using C style cast here, static cast is some kind of mechanism that will at least prevent us from doing obvious um, error here. So since compiler knows that in some way we can say that method A will operate with class that we are passing here as template parameter it will show no error. If we are doing some obvious error here, static class will say like, no, it cannot be, so you have an error here. C style cast won't do that. Why we are not using dynamic cast here and probably checking for now, Peter, because it's runtime uh, thing and we don't really need to consume um, performance at this point. So because we are pretty aware, we are pretty sure that it will be just class A and that's it. So if no concerns, I'm going to the next slide. Right. So how should we do that with, oh, I skipped the part with a name. So I likely to address this feature as grace of standard C++ 20. So basically what this feature does, it allows us to pass as template parameter anything that is constructible and add constexpr. So if you have basically constructor with constexpr keyword and it is actually constructible at compile time because you not so not all constexpr is not forcing us to have constexpr all the time. But if it's constructible at constexpr and has this keyword, we can basically pass this struct, which has this constexpr constructor as template argument. To, to avoid um, writing template arguments here, we can use deduction guide, which is you, which is last one. So it's basically introduced in C++ 70. Basically what it does, this function converts uh, your arguments passed into the constructor to the basically the type of name constant and then calling this constructor. So basically you don't need to specify uh, template arguments. You can just use it as you would use constructor. And because of that, uh, syntax on the right of the slide is working. So if no questions here, uh, we'll go to the next slide. So qualifiers, so since we have already C style string implemented uh, as a result of previous slide, we can think of uh, qualifiers as also a C style string, right? Since we cannot pass uh, keywords as template arguments, we can pass C style string, which will be representing these keywords. And based on that, we can do some logical conditions. We can uh, go and try to basically do stuff depending on the arguments of method options, basic method qualifiers and other stuff. So on this slide here, I'm basically proposing next template for method. So for uh, harder, since we have, don't have API that will produce this method from, for us, we, we need at least for now, pass um, parent type as first argument. Then we have actually the template of method. We have signature and we have options. Options, it's CV qualifiers. So basic const volatile, L value, R value, virtual and pure virtual uh, options. So if we want to somehow specify implementation for some method options, 
so we can use partial specialization in this case we are basically ignoring return these arcs and other stuff we are we are only addressing options here so we are stating that if sequence will be virtual const l value and pure virtual then we are doing some implementation for it so yeah so probably we have some questions for now so don't be shy i know that it's a little bit boring stuff so it has a lot of templates here but any question is welcome at the end. So formatted options, why we are allowed to do variadic of C style string, because we are using name constant from previous slide as variadic uh, arguments. And because of that, we can basically pass C style strings of any amount. So short step before doing um, conditions. Spoiler a little. So before doing some uh, stuff over qualifiers, I want to ask you if you have ever worked with no except. So post in the chat. If you already know where it's going, probably you can speak up and say uh, why I'm mentioning no except here. So I'm waiting for yes or no in the chat if somebody have used no except or not. So I see a few yes, that's nice. So if not, if you haven't used, it's also right. I have used it only probably two times, but if nobody doesn't know about why I'm mentioning no except here, um, I will say it. Uh, so basically no except has a nice feature of conditionality. So basically you can see on the slide as second statement of no except you have like brackets and expression what basically it does um, expression inside these brackets is evaluated compile time if it's true then method constructor on other stuff is marked as no except if it's false it's not no except so basically we have this conditional applying of specifier so um, if you realize it will become the next so we don't have this feature for const we don't have this feature for volatile but i believe every time somebody is saying that c plus plus does not have this feature as as probably in another language is some c plus plus developer is saying like hold my beer and start coding so um basically what we want from this feature is um generating some compile time statements about qualifiers depending on template arguments so in this case i will go uh, in higher overview so we have um first condition if we have pure virtual option enter it or not so uh, i will repeat the pure virtual option is basically equal zero so if you were writing interfaces you have uh, faced it so in this case if we have interface we cannot talk about any implementation right so because of that we don't need really store function pointer if in, even if it is now it's not just required uh, but if we have not this option thus we have like uh, implementation because of that we need to store uh, this function pointer but storing function pointer we should know what type should be this function pointer so basically we should know uh, with which cv qualifiers will be entered um, object right so when you are operating in method with object you are placing after signature const a value a value and other stuff to mention if you can use this object with any context so we have we should handle this case um this function pointer and because of that we need like const uh, some conditional expression same for volatile so for l value r value we have a little bit easier here so if r value is entered we should 
move it. But since move is just static cast, we can go with just saying that it will be your value. And if it's not a value, we should pass it by a reference L value because we don't want really in method to modify a copy or to do operations on copy. We basically expect that we will address actually this then copy of this. And we need basically a constructor to store this uh, function pointer. So it's a little bit uh, more verbose with operator invoke uh, because you have virtual here you have const volatile l value r value pure virtual and depending on pure virtual you may call implementation may not call so if we have pure virtual we are not going to any any implementation because we don't have one if we are uh, done if we don't have this pure virtual option then we should call this implementation. So inside of the because code is a little bit too much, you can think of this as was in previous slide. We were just casting static cast and forwarding arguments. So in this case, um, it's basically duplicating the function pointer. However, two cases are not matching here: virtual, pure virtual, and second thing is uh, R value and L value references. So since function pointer is always operating with reference or R value reference because we, we are not interested in copying, right? But for specifying operator, it's not that true because we will always operate in this method either with L value or R value. We are specifying here L value only in case if we want to constrain um, this method from being used in R value. So it's, it's pretty simple, but should mention that. So maybe we, we have some concerns for this point. I know there is a lot of things like conditional and feature that is not already implemented, not really code, it's pseudo code. However, you, feel, you can feel free to ask. Right, let me check the chat. So I don't see any questions. Right. So uh, I will probably ch switch to the code. Let, let me sec. So please post in the chat if you see or speak up if you see the code. Yes, we see. Right. Uh, so basically, what we are doing here, we are doing a little bit. Uh, I, I would say not prepare, so it's may cause a little bit damage to the people who are coding without templates and from without preprocessors also. So basically what we have here, the implementation of method, and then we have like creating of implementing on the conditional feature of a qualifier. So if to be uh, quite short, if we address previous slide, we were uh, specifying the um, the specialization of options that we are using. So if you remember, we were entering here like uh, virtual, const, and stuff like that. So to do that automatically, we can use preprocessor library chaos pp which stands for preprocessor. And what it basically does here, we are um, going through every qualifier that we have entered. Uh, we are using it as string, C style string. And then we are just placing it uh, in this method. So basically compiler does for us this specialization of method of class. So there is few helper types, um, helper macros. However, what they basically does, they are implementing this conditional uh, qualifier. So basically here we have code function pointer. And for this, we are passing if it will have const or not have. So we are getting value of qualifier that is by index two. So do not go uh, a little, to not go that much in details basically because we should know 
what qualifier was entered and qualifier was not entered, we are using indexes. So we have like array in which, for example, zero index stands for virtual keyword, one stands for pure virtual, and so on. So by this logic, we can easily check by index if some keyword was entered and some was not. Because of that, we are using here indexes. And to check if it was presented or not, we are passing either array of this keyword or either empty array. It was done because of I'm not really that aware of preprocessor pre meta programming. However, it was uh, some way of implementing SD optional in preprocessor. And we are doing same stuff for other stuff. So Chaos PPF is checking conditional variable, uh, condition of qualifier if it's pure virtual or not. We are setting uh, constructor. If not, we are using just default one just to, to have instantiation. Because we need to do this in protected section, we are, we are not expecting the user to create method as itself. We want user to make it from the class. And the stuff that was already mentioning on the slide is for uh, invoke operators. So basically, even though there is a lot of macros, key part is here. So we have return some type, operator, some arguments. And then later in the code, we have like invoking of this implementation of um, function pointer that we have stored earlier, which is basically lambda function. So we are static casting to the const, if it has const, if volatile, have volatile, and thing that I was mentioning with references. And then the interesting part is we just basically going through every combination of possible of virtual, const, volatile, pure virtual, and other stuff. So only the thing we should uh, here treat uh, differently is the case with pure virtual, since um, you have, if you have used pure virtual, you know that you cannot specify pure virtual without virtual, right? And because of that, we should handle case when there is no virtual and pure virtual, when there is virtual and no pure virtual, and when there is virtual and pure virtual. So a lot of words was going on, but I think you get the idea that we basically going through every combination of qualifier, then we are in, uh, creating by preprocessor every possible uh, template specialization of these uh, qualifiers. And then later on, we can use it like that. So basically, we are creating some class that will store methods. So it's for now, it's user using it like this. It has, he says that his class should have this method, uh, should have this method, this method. So basically, they are all the same. They are only different in const and volatile, and one of them is pure virtual. So basically, I pick up those to demonstrate that we can uh, invoke different uh, methods, even though they have all of them have have only invoke operator. They have like pretty different interface. They have same interface, but only different options. And then we are using constructor passing the basically the implementation of these methods. So here we are specifying base type and setting the implementation. We are using uh, using keyword here. If somebody have work with inheritance and uh, overloaded methods, you should know like that if you have same method in base class and same method with same name, uh, with same name in uh, derived, you, you should use using to uh, unhide uh, method from base class. And here we are basically overriding, since there is keyword override, you, I can pretty be sure that um, this method here is overrided by this statement, right? In other case, um, compiler would give me an error. That, that's the reason why override just exists in C++. So uh, let me try to compile it. Um, yes, so. As for me, it's compiled, well, no error, that's good. So basically what program does, it has this methods class, and then to call different methods, I'm applying qualifier there. there. So to call const, 
method, we are addressing this method's uh, object as const. We have const function with argument one. Right, we get it, so check. Uh, same for volatile, argument two, check. And for pure virtual, check. So implementation is here. Right, so probably we have um, some questions on this point. Maybe somebody of you are thinking, why should we do all this stuff? Uh, like mentioning this, mentioning this, so a lot of duplication, it's not like really user um, friendly. Yeah, you're right, this will be fixed a little bit um, after probably on the previous slides. So if everybody is too shy to ask questions, I will go to the next one. Um, so let me pause and proceed. So I was mentioning before the preprocessor programming with four, with iterating through every combination of this one. And we really want to know what is the result. So result will be something like this. So in this case, I'm showing the default case. So the compiler will generate code like this. Uh, this code was basically get it from the compiler input. If you want to do that with prod processor, you can in GCC, you can enter uh, capital E as flag and it will result as preprocessor uh, code rather than executable binary. You have here function pointer without const, without volatile and other stuff because it was not mentioned in method options. Uh, we have constructor because we have implementation. We have return operator and static and invoked here. Right. Um, so let's proceed. So probably interesting case is pure virtual when we have no implementation. For this case, we will have partial specialization with method options like this, virtual and pure virtual, and protected constructor, which is basically just default one and virtual pure virtual invoke operator, which is empty because we have no implementation. We are not interested in it. So probably since we are using here partial specialization and we are just entering the sequence of C style strings, so it will be later on fixed. However, for the at this point we have issue with um, order, right? So if a uh, user enters not uh, virtual, pure virtual, he enters first one pure virtual and then virtual, sorry, then virtual. Then it will be compile error since because compiler have not generated code for the such sequence. So later on it was fixed for uh, require case and entering uh, the predicate which uh, basically uh, functionate as partial specialization, but it more flexible. It allows us to do some condition rather than entering row value. So if you have some questions, you may speak up. So we will discuss it. I, I think I see. Yeah, we have one in the chat. How can you use this generated pure virtual method? Um, so if we are talking about usage, um, you can uh, reference, so if we want to invoke it, so if you talk about usage as invoke, we can um, store somewhere, for example, um, method, which will, so in this case, we're not, we have this, but later on, probably we can, um, why, right, you cannot. Uh, so basically you can store somewhere, um, pointer or maybe reference to the object of type method, uh, interface type on right probably it will be a little bit problematic with interface so I was not really thinking about of use it as invoke but I think uh, I had some case when you can just um, convert it to or treat it as reference to this method function so I'm not let me check if I had this in example um, 
this example, unfortunately. So, so if we talk about um, about invoking, probably I cannot answer this question right now. I cannot just remember if I have used it as as example. If you store interface with this invoke operator. I, th I think I was looking at this interface when I was developing such feature, but I cannot remember for right now, so sorry. Uh, but if we talk about, for example, overriding such such method, we can do this as a previous example. You're basically declaring override in class in which you're generating this method and marking it as override, and you should have like the same signature and Yes, and that's all basically. So if the question was about storing it as interface in other class, sorry, I cannot answer that right now. So I think I will try to find it and, go and uh, re reply on it. So if there is any other questions, feel free to ask. If not, we are going to the next one. Right. Um, so next thing is generating basically the API that will generate for us methods, at least in single class. So these methods will be stored in one single class uh, rather than declaring each method uh, as direct uh, base of our class. So basically what we are interested in, we don't want to duplicate parent as it was with methods, right? If you remember that slide, we were declaring method, we were specifying in each method the parent class. And when we were invoking it in constructor, we were also mentioning that and, uh, and later on and later on and later on, we were duplicating that. So we don't want that. To overcome this issue, we can um, basically split uh, implementation of method, which will store um, template of uh, temp type name of parent and basically the template of method, the name, signature, and option. And then later on, uh, we can combine it. How would we do that? We can uh, basically, the API will be some class with which we will be called generate class in this case. We will be entering parent as the first one, as first, and then we will be entering the method templates. And then later on, using partial specialization, we will dispatch this template and using generated method, we will return actually the method implementation, which will already have, which will be having a parent type name because we were passing it from generate class. So in this case, we are avoiding duplication of parent class, which is really redundant because when we are using this method inside the class, we already know which what parent it is. We only need it to say, to compile to which class we need to cast and that's all. So, and then we are declaring constructor to pass somehow implementation to those methods. Um, but there is another question, how should we then access it? So in the case when we have like as direct um, a base class, this method we can easily convert it. But when it's hide from the API, we need probably some way to access it. And probably declaring the full type or trying to make some case when qualifiers will be enough to distinguish method probably it's not the thing you want to really want to use. You you probably will want to have some interface, some API that is close to the what compiler gives you. Compiler gives you a class object and this object has some method. So you're placing that, you're, set, you're writing the name of the method and then you can use this method. So in case of generating methods, you want the same API. So for this case, um, I'm using, I don't know how this trick is called. So you just entering, you're just using two basically tricks here. First one is um, converting to base class. And before converting, you should specify which um, base class should it be. So 
we want to uh, to convert it to some method with some name but we don't really want to know not really want to specify every time signature and options and in this case compiler can detect basically base type based on few uh, template arguments if it's really enough to distinguish it from another base classes so if you have like a lot of methods but they all have different names passing the name is will be enough to convert to some method basically when you want to get this method you are just returning the reference and reference should be of type uh, method parent will be the same for all the methods because we are instantiating and this get is inside one class uh, name should be different so because you want to access some distinguished method which has unique name you're entering name and other uh, stuff like say signature and options will be deduced by compiler and then it will return your method you method so because we are not really interested here in um, returning reference by itself because it will require uh, duplicating of this code and probably fixing some compiler issues we are just returning the type using stddk decal type as they invoke result it's all results in just one type and this type is actually the method implementation you want to use and then using for example trailing uh, auto type you are just mentioning that it will be this type plus reference so for const get it will be const reference so yeah it's a little bit verbose because you need to um, write get for every uh, combination but probably you can use just preprocessor um, logic that was used for generating methods so um, in scope i was developing i didn't try it really uh, I was using a little bit different approach. However, it will be mentioned later, so it probably worth discussion. Right, so stop words, probably some demos. So let me share my screen and edit collection. So basically, here is the code you have already seen uh, on the slide, yes. And here's the implementation of methods. So it basically pretty the same I have shown before. However, the difference here is that we are passing the name. So in the slides before, to avoid some complication, I just ignored it, but here we have names. So the only difference is here in invoke operator. So it used because we can, for example, have a lot of pure virtual methods. We want to all of them to override, and we should somehow distinguish this override. So tag is used for tag dispatching, dispatching here. And it basically allows us to write different overrides for different pure virtual function. Right, returning back to the demo, um, we have some class, for example, cat that can meow and meow at some volume, right? To have um, at least some uh, fancy code here, we are specifying some different uh, arguments types. So basically what we are doing here, we are saying generate for us class, class that we want to generate for is cat we want method with such template which is name mail uh, option uh, not option function signature will be void and option will be no option so just default one uh, same for another method and we were adding the here different function signature just to have some different functions so we can at least in demo show some some difference between those methods then we are passing the implementations here so the problematic may you may see right now that we cannot really say for what it's this implementation is so yeah when we have like not a lot of methods we can say like okay this const is for this one this non-const is for this one but for now it's really a matter of the order which you will place it and it will be not will be fixed in the next slide, but we'll be shown how to, do, to fix that. And then we are calling basically these methods. So basically we have this method cat, and then we are calling these methods. So to demonstrate, we can call all of these methods. And as you can see, we can call 
both of these methods for non-const version of cat and for const version we can call uh, this method if we will try to do this one for non-const uh, for this non-const method to call so you can see some output here so we have called function this one this implementation we have this one code from here two three and we have like this one call here with four so i use different arguments here too so we can distinguish it is more easily right and if we will try to compile non-const method since you have you can see that there is no const option we will try to compile it compile will give us an error so it looks a little bit um, annoying because there is a lot of preprocessor stuff going on however if you scroll up a little bit you will see the really error so the error is that we cannot match the cocoms type so yeah, this approach requires i think a lot of not a lot of but quite a few uh, static asserts with more appropriate messages that will be user friendly however for now if you are dealing with it like me for a few months then you can easily realize that somewhere const is um, messed up right so maybe we have some questions here so if you were doing some methods by yourself you probably have faced like problems when you have for example same name but methods are differently could you name such case so i'm pretty sure that everyone of you have faced with such methods and you can really remember of one of that it's pretty common for a lot of classes so basically my hint will be encapsulation and this approach is uh, pretty uh, not standard but it's required in java uh, not sure about other languages so wait a few more seconds maybe somebody wants to guess at least well if not okay i will answer for you it's getters so probably sometimes you have like comp and non const version of getters so because of that you have like same name like get here get here and here you will have const so since we are checking by the name what compiler really will say us it that um, converting to base class is ambiguous and the reason for that is because we have like two members with the same name so we should need some mechanism to distinguish um, const and non-const you might think of okay this one will convert only to only to const one but no because of we are uh, specifying const as options here uh, that's the reason why it will just ignore it because you cannot like pretty define inheritance based on const qualifier so for this one um i will check let me a second i will show my screen this presentation so for this one we need to reimplement uh, logic of compiler right so you have already probably know that um, when we have non-const and const version we should pick up non-const one if we have const version if we have okay if we are operating with object that is non-const we should prefer non-const method if we don't have it we will use const one and when we have const object we will use only const method so we should somehow implement this uh, logic not to implement but re-implement um, it can be if from higher perspective it can be implemented in the next way you basically are doing the 
iterating your filtering all the templates methods that you have already generated so because you're passing them as template argument to the generate class you already have stored them and because of that you can really go over it and check for some predicate predicate could be name plus qualifier right you can say like if it has this name on this qualifier then okay the return me this type and that's basically what it, uh, API should do in the next slide. And for logic already mentioned before with non-const and const object, we should create some mechanism that will use, uh, that will implement this logic, like taking priority non-const if uh, we have it, if we don't have them, take const version and for const we should take only const one so final screen and final demo probably a little bit to a lot of code template going here here is a little bit more uh, i'm not pretty sure that this implementation is uh, the optimal one um, but since it is proof of concept that it can be used and can be developed, I think it's enough for presentation. So basically, we have some helper types, right? It's just the way we are storing the filtered methods, right? We have iterated from array. Uh, we want to store the values that satisfy predicate. Uh, array is one. Then is text. Text probably should be mentioned as predicates, but for now, let's assume text are okay naming. So we are setting the name that predicate. So it should be equal to this name. Then we are um, saying that method should include some qualifier and should not include some qualifier, right? Uh, code here is basically setting up the for loop that was mentioned before that, that for loop that will iterate through the templates uh, of methods. And then e we have code, which is basically the starting point of this for, we are setting that result is empty and let's iterate over all methods, templates. Then uh, we are declaring the end of for each, which is basically returning the result of array. And then to be, like to have things that are used really close to each other, uh, there is the condition which are used in, for each. So basically the main body of for is here. So we are doing as the conditional here, uh, we are adding or not adding to array. So you can see that it's this operation is adding to array. This one is uh, keeping array the same. So it's ignoring method. And this action is performed based on condition for tag. Uh, tag is type name. It is done for uh, easier reuse for different tags, right? Then this conditional for tag is dispatched in this partition specialization. And depending on which uh, tag you are using it, so for here it's um, tags, uh, tag is name. We're setting that. Okay, it will be some tag name with some, uh, it's not will be some tag name, it will be tag name with some template argument name. So we are not really tied to watch uh, to what name is here. So it will be entered with a tag and partial specialization will allow us to get this name and operate in it with it in predicate. Here we are doing this thing when just comparing uh, names. So here is using the same method options as their stuff, but basically what it does, it just compares uh, compile time C strings. Uh, then we have uh, such predicate for include. So if we have or no, if we have like the option we want, same logic with, as with name, uh, but it is variadic and uh, order insensitive. So I was mentioning before that we will have problems with partial specialization because order will maybe differentiate from what you have generated and what user will enter. In this case, it will uh, do it no matter what order is used. And same for exclude. Keep 
so we just checking uh, if uh, this uh, sequence does not really have um, options that we've entered. So it, this is used in the case I was mentioning that we should pick up from uh, for non-clonst uh, different based on what we have and don't have. So we are basically trying to find non-clonst version here. So find member sum exclude by if it doesn't have const and if it's not found, find const one. Uh, to do that magic here, we are using STDYT. So I don't really remember how this trick is called, but you can uh, find reference on CPP reference about it. So basically I just took an example and what it does, it checks uh, if this field exists in T1. If it does not exist, it will pick up this um, structure. If it exists, it will pick up this one. And then to not take a lot of time because I'm already overheading with 15 minutes. So basically what we are doing next, um, we are setting getters, which is depending on the context that where they use. So we are using this get in const, we are finding only const. We are using get in non-const, we want to find firstly const, then we want to find non-const if first one is not found. And other stuff is pretty like in previous example. However, we have only two methods which are different only by const and implementation. And if we compile it, I believe it, I hope it will compile. Yes, it has compiled. So we have firstly called non-const because we have cat as non-const. And then we have cat as const and we are calling uh, const one because it's const. It is adding here const as a predicate for qualifier and self we have this work. So using this find member T, what it, what it basically does, it just does not just return something. It returns basically the type of method. And because of that, you can play a lot and, for example, pass it with constructor arguments and use it later on in generate class to generate specific members. So basically, you will have here um, this implementation plus uh, predicate to which um, method this implementation should be added. So yeah, that's probably it. So if anybody interested, I can show it in library for which I was doing this feature. So in this presentation, I, I tried to cut um, everything that is not related to method specifically. But if you're interested, I might show it in library. So, but yeah, that's the end of presentation, and we are.